This lecture is on the cardiac cycle and describes the sequence of events that occur during the contraction and relaxation events of the myocardium. It's important that you first of all understand the function of cardiac anatomy, which can be found on cbphysiology.com. Cardiac contraction is initiated by action potentials that are generated by the sinoatrial node, which is located in the upper posterior wall of the right atrium. The depolarization of these cells cause then a wave of electrical activity to sweep across the atria and then down into the ventricles. And this electrical activity causes the muscle cells themselves to depolarize, which then initiates contraction. The sequence of contraction is that the first tissues to, to undergo depolarization are found in the right and left atrial muscles. So these muscles will contract first within these two chambers. Following a brief time delay, we will then see that the ventricular muscle itself will undergo contraction. There are two basic phases of the cardiac cycle. We call these phases systole and diastole. Systole begins with the actual contraction of the ventricular muscle. In this case, we are talking about cardiac cycle as it pertains to the ventricular muscles themselves. So systole begins with contraction, and shortly after the muscles begin to contract, we then see that the muscles, the ventricles, will then be able to eject the blood into their outflow tracts. So we have the period of ejection. Towards the end of the phase of contraction and ejection, or near the end of systole, some of these muscles will actually undergo relaxation and begin to lose their ability to generate force. Once the ejection ceases, we then enter into the second general phase of the cardiac cycle, the longer of the two phases at normal heart rates, and this is called diastole. So di diastole is initiated with relaxation, and once the ventricles relax sufficiently, they will then begin to fill with blood from the atrial chambers. This slide will now look at ventricular systole in more detail. And this diagram that is on the left is a diagram that's now going to be shown in several of these slides. And this diagram represents the changes that we see in ventricular pressure. That's the red line here. Also within the aorta and also within the left atrium. Below that, we have the changes in blood volume that are found within the left ventricle. And below that, we are showing the electrocardiogram, which we use as a marker for initiating different phases of the cardiac cycle. And then below that are various heart sounds, which will not be described in this lecture. So contraction begins with the appearance of what we call the QRS complex of the electrocardiogram. And that complex represents the depolarization of the ventricular muscle mass. Shortly after depolarization occurs, we see that left ventricular pressure, which is depicted in this diagram, rapidly increases. But at this period of time, there's no ejection occurring because as the ventricle begins to increase its pressure, we find that the mitral valve, which separates it from the left atrium, suddenly closes. The closure of the mitral valve on the left side of the heart and the closure of the tricuspid valve on the right side of the heart produce the first heart sound, or S1. As the pressure increases, initially it is still lower than the aortic pressure. So we have a period of time, which we call isovolumetric contraction, in which the pressure is increasing in the ventricle, but there is no change in ventricular volume, as shown down below here. Once the pressure within the left ventricle exceeds the pressure within the aorta, then the aortic valve will suddenly open, and the ventricle will rapidly eject blood into the aorta. The ventricle still undergoes systolic 
contraction, and so its pressure continues to rise, as does the aortic pressure, because blood is being ejected into the aorta. And as shown down below here, you can see that the left ventricular volume is rapidly declining as the blood volume is ejected out of the ventricle and into the aorta. About halfway through systole, we see the appearance of what is called the T wave on the electrocardiogram. The T wave represents a ventricular um, repolarization and will then begin to initiate relaxation. And this relaxation will occur then until finally the left ventricular pressure falls below the aortic pressure, which causes the aortic valve to suddenly slam shut, which stops ejection. And from that point on, there is no further change in left ventricular volume. So at the point of closure of the aortic valve is the end of ventricular systole. The closure of the aortic valve on the left side of the heart and the near simultaneous closure of the pulmonic valve on the right side of the heart caused the second heart sound, or S2. Now the volume of blood that remains within the ventricle at the end of contraction and ejection is called the end systolic volume, or LVESV, for left ventricular end systolic volume. Now the volume of blood that was in the ventricle prior to contraction and ejection was termed the left ventricular end diastolic volume. Now we're going to look at ventricular diastole. As I indicated a couple slides ago, diastole is initiated by repolarization of the ventricular muscle so it begins to relax and its pressure falls. In the actual period of diastole, we define it as when the aortic valve closes. After the aortic valve closes, the left ventricular pressure rapidly begins to fall. And during this time, the aortic valve is closed, but the mitral valve is still closed. So as the pressure is declining within the ventricle, as you can see below, there is no change in left ventricular volume. In other words, this is called isovolumetric relaxation. Iso meaning same, volumetric referring to volume. So all we find during this phase is that the blood pressure within the ventricle is declining, but there is no change in volume. Finally, we will reach a point when, where the left ventricular pressure falls below the blood pressure within the left atrium. And once this occurs, now blood will suddenly rush from the left atrium into the left ventricle. Now, ventricular pressure will still continue to fall because it's still relaxing. All the while, blood is beginning to fill it from the left atrium. After the ventricle is completely relaxed, as it continues to fill with blood coming to it from the left atrium, there will be a gradual increase in left ventricular pressure. Now, we can see these changes down below in the volume diagram. We see that once this mitral valve opens, that is where the ventricular volume suddenly and very rapidly begins to increase, and this is sometimes called a phase of rapid ventricular filling. And then it becomes slower over time as it, as it begins to achieve its, its maximal filled state. This is a, an important definition, and that is stroke volume. Stroke volume is defined as the difference between ventricular end diastolic volume and end systolic volumes. So we can say that stroke volume is equal to EDV minus ESV. If we go back to the previous slide, that is the difference between the filled volume of the ventricle prior to contraction and ejection. That filled volume minus what remains in the ventricle at the end of ejection, the end systolic volume, that difference between those two represents the stroke volume. Now, in a normal heart, it's important to note that the stroke volume 
which is defined as the end diastolic volume minus the end systolic volume, is the same volume of blood as ejected into the aorta during systole. Another important definition that has clinical significance is what we call the ejection fraction. The ejection fraction is the fraction of blood ejected by the ventricle relative to its filled volume or its end diastolic volume. So mathematically, the ejection fraction or EF is equal to the stroke volume divided by the end diastolic volume. Or we could say that ejection fraction, EF, is equal to the end diastolic volume minus the end systolic volume divided by the end diastolic volume. Ejection fraction is important because it's a measure of the ability of the heart to eject blood. And normally the ejection fraction is about 0.55 to 0.65 or 55 to 65%. So that means that normally when the ventricle is ejecting blood, it, e it ejects approximately 60% of its filled volume. We've, we've already talked about ventricular systole and diastole. I want to say a few things about atrial systole and diastole. Atrial systole and diastole are initiated by electrical depolarization of the atrial chambers. And that is seen on the electrocardiogram as the P wave noted here. So right after the P wave occurs, we see that there is an increase in left atrial pressure. This transient increase in left atrial pressure is called the A wave. And what that does is to force additional blood volume into the ventricle at the end of filling. But because most of the filling of the ventricle occurred just passively prior to atrial contraction. This atrial contraction only accounts for about 10% of ventricular filling at rest. However, during exercise at very high heart rates where you have less time for filling and you have increased force of atrial contraction, this atrial contraction can account for up to 40% of ventricular filling. Atrial diastole represents the period of relaxation and filling of the atrial chambers. And depicted on this diagram is the left atrial filling. So after the, the atria contracts and the ventricle now begins to develop pressure during its systole, blood begins to fill the left atrium. And it continues to fill the left atrium as the ventricle is ejecting blood into the aorta. And it will continue to do so until the end of the isovolumetric relaxation phase, which, as I've already described, um, occurs because the ventricle is relaxing, but all the valves are closed. But once that intraventricular pressure falls below the left atrial pressure, then the atria will release their blood and it will then go into the left ventricle. So this entire phase following contraction, blood is entering the atria from the pulmonary veins in the, in the case of the left side of the heart. 